Most big budget animation films nowadays are 3D or CGI, and most of them look stunning. Even though I do still personally prefer hand drawn animation, which I actually made a video on that process which is going to be linked up here. But yeah, in this video I'm going to be saying how 3D animated movies are made. <laughs> This is the general process, although the process will vary depending on different studios. Each studio may vary this process or what order they do the process in. Got the disclaimer? I don't know why I'm asking because you're not going to answer me, but great. <laughs> so number one is script writing and this is where obviously the script is written and the story and its characters are thought up. It could take one year or two years or 14 years in the case of Brad Bird, or 5 minutes in the case of Illumination. Number 2 is storyboarding, and this is where important scenes from the entire film are either drawn out by hand or on a computer in 2D. And on it, stuff like arrows and text are drawn to show action or give more information about each picture. And then the visual development or look development comes up, and this is where they make the backgrounds and the costumes, or the, at least they design it. They also get an idea as to where they want the characters to be in these locations at this point too. Number four is model sheets, and you may have seen some of these. It's the sort of thing that you'd see on Art of Animation if you go to their Facebook page, or just similar pages like that. By the way, I'm not affiliated with Art of Animation, I just really like their page. And yeah, they're basically sheets that show the characters making a whole load of weird faces, and funny faces and that sort of thing and it shows the characters from different angles and all of these are going to be used as reference for when the characters are actually animated. And then come the animatics and this is kind of the first form of any motion to do with the film and this is when the storyboards are put to scratch dialogue which anyone could have recorded like whoever's half good at recording voiceovers and temporary music and sound effects are added too. But yeah the animatics are basically a sequence of all the images put one after the other and it's there to give the people working on this film a kind of look as to how the story will play out and how it will look. Number six is pre-visualization and this is when rough models of the various things in the film are created. These elements as they are at this point won't be used in the final film although they may actually take the same models and further improve upon them to make them good enough for the final version of the film. Although at this stage they are more focused on the technicalities rather than the aesthetics of the things that they make. And at 7 is layout, and this is when these low res models or blocks of geometry are put to rough, very rough animation. So it's kind of like an animatic in a way, but in 3D and with a bit more animation. And at this stage is when stuff like camera moves, depth of fields, composition and all of that sort of stuff is brought to the director and he can approve or disapprove of them. And changes will be made until he's happy. And then later on in this stage, the modeling department makes their final models, and then textures and lots of other nice and colourful stuff is added to the models. And then number 8 is rigging, and this is when the characters are given skeletons, or at least virtual skeletons, so they can actually move and stuff. This may seem like a really easy stage, but the skeleton does have to be actually quite complex, because there has to be little intricate pieces, so stuff like emotions can be shown well, and so that small, subtle movements can be done in characters. And number 9 is animation preparation, and this is when the characters are taken out of the void that they're in at that point, and they're put into locations, and then they go on to sort out set dressing, which is basically putting things around the set to make it look less empty and more lived in. So like bins and telephone boxes and benches, that sort of stuff. And then at number 10 comes character animation, and I really don't have to explain what this stage is. At this stage they basically make the models move, and they use video that they've taken of themselves acting out the scenes as reference. And this is to all help the movements look a lot more believable, and closer to what their movements would be. And for the times that performance capture is used, or motion capture is used, the role of the animator's mark becomes kind of tidying up what the um, capture didn't do that well, as well as animating the few parts here and there that the motion capture or performance capture didn't end up capturing. And then at 11 there's the crowd development, and again it's another obvious one, it's dealing with all the people that walk around in the background looking happy or shocked or confused or sad or whatever based on what's happening in, in the environment. And then at 12 going back to less obvious names there's the character effects artists. And these people deal with everything to do with a character that's not living. And yeah I know these characters technically aren't living but you know exactly what I mean. They deal with their clothes, their hats and stuff like that. 
And then there's these special effects guys, and these guys do exactly what you'd expect. They make everything from explosions that Michael Bay would be proud of, to footprints that Rutten Took would be proud of. So you don't think he'll follow those? They are great names. And then there's the technical directors who work throughout this entire process and are basically the people that the staff go to if they have issues or need problem solving or something like that. So it's basically like me at home to my family except they get paid and I don't get paid. And then there's the background map paintings and this is the part of the process that's very similar to hand drawn animation. So paintings are drawn out and stuff like that and they're put in the background and they're basically put right at the back of scenes where nobody's even going to be looking. It's kind of tragic actually. And then at 16 the lighting department does their thing and they animate the water. I'm joking, you, you obviously know what they're doing. Lighting isn't just like falling down and hitting an objects and that's it and making it a bit brighter. They also have to deal with shadows and also reflections of light bouncing around the scene and stuff like that. And they also have to think about how the lighting is going to affect the mood of the scene because lighting does have a big impact on the mood of it. And then right at the end of the process the video editing happens and this is where any further edits are made that need to be made, any unwanted scenes are taken out and title and credits are added and that sort of stuff. And then now that the film's very close to being finished it's time for composition. And this basically takes the final rendered frames of the film and rendering is basically taking the stuff in the video editor like all the layers and all of that sort of stuff and putting them all together into just a normal video that you can play on any computer. And just as a side note, rendering takes ages, I hate it. That's, that's all I've got to say. And at this point depth of field and colours are tweaked if they need to be tweaked and anything else that needs to be tweaked or added is tweaked or added. And then when the final edit is locked down and all of the perfectionist composition people can't make any more changes even if they really want to, it's time for the audio. So at this point music is added in, sound effects are added in, foley happens which is basically where the film is watched back and people are making a whole load of noise that's supposed to be the noise that's seen on screen basically. And then those sounds are eventually put into the film. And by the way, the alternative of this is doing it all manually, putting stuff in like footsteps and no one wants to do that. I, I had to do that. <laughs> and at this stage, they also do lip syncing too. So they sync the dialogue to the lips. And then right at the end is the color grading. So these people make sure the lighting and the color is all really good and stuff. And that the color is supposed to be the colors that they are and that they match the overall look that the directors want for the color and the lighting of this film and that they don't change too much from scene to scene and the change isn't jarring. And yep, that's the 3D animation process. As I said, some parts may be different for different studios. These are kind of just the different parts that come together to make a 3D animated film, although it may be in different orders. But anyway, um, if you like this video be sure to give it a like, be sure to subscribe to see more animation discussion videos and comment down below if you like this video or you just want to say anything or you've got any film requests or whatever for me to review. So I hope you all have a great day, I'll see you all in the next video, bye.